This video is sponsored by Mech Arena. It's tabletop time! I'm Dave. I'm Jen. I'm Murray. And today we're going to build a board to play some skirmish games on. I'm thinking of doing something really unique today and really down to earth that all of you can do at home. So I'm thinking of making a board, uh, a ruined city with some gothic buildings, something really unique that no one does. Mmm. Yes. Let's change things up and do something that no one actually has. Let's blow up a shopping mall! There we have it. In real life though. We're gonna mech it with Mech Arena and mech it with lots of parts that we can find around the studio. Mm. Scrap, yeah. in fact. Let's see what we have lying around and that we can find a new use for. Today's video is sponsored by Mech Arena. There's a lot of shooters out there, but Mech Arena is special in that I actually go back to it and play it. One of my favorite mechs in Mech Arena is the Lancer. It's this super zippy, speedy little mech and it's so adorable and cute and it matches my personality. Something I love about the Lancer is how easily I blow them up with my long arms, destroying them with my way superior tactics. I don't know if you can catch me first. So October is a huge month for Mech Arena. They've got a brand new battle pass coming out with some awesome goodies for October and Oktoberfest events. The game is completely free to play on iOS and Android. Click the link in the description and get $25 worth of free goodies, including the Firelight skin, a Prodigy crate and a Plasma Cannon 4. And with that said, let's get back to the battlefield that mechs could be stomping around our apocalypse board. Okay, so we're in the warehouse and you know um, this build we gotta get it done fairly quick right? So you got 10 minutes to find all the junk you want to use for the build. Oh. 10 minutes, 10 minutes. All, right. Okay. all right. Go, 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 go. I need a bin. Oh, there's another one of those cuffs, Murray. What are you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm digging for the scrap. Have you got scrap? Can I? Trash. Trash, yeah, can I see your trash? trash? Can I go through your trash? By all means. <gasps> Would this help? I think we have paper towel. <laughs> Great. So for us to start this project, the first thing we needed to do was have an idea of the board we wanted to make. So we set about roughing out some plans of what we thought would make a playable board. Here, I was pretty insistent on having some considerations that made sure that all of the surfaces were really good to put minis on. We really wanted to create a sense of buildings and walls collapsed in on themselves, kind of like a Warhammer hive that had been blown up and layers and floors above it had fallen through the roofs below. So with our plans established, Murray refined out the area we were going to make. A bit of a thoroughfare, a collapsed front wall, and some hard angles. As different areas have broken through to the building below, the angles and geometries and directions of the corridors have all shifted in the rubble. Now I have all my funny little pieces of scrap, I'm going to glue them onto the board. But first I'm going to put down some small offcuts that we had saved around the warehouse. This will help me get that really uneven and askew terrain that I'm looking for. We decided that we wanted one of these pieces to be a lot more raised than the others. So I set to making a fairly large stand for it and then glued it all down. And to allow miniatures to traverse up here, I'm going to glue some smaller pieces into the sides to act as literal stepping stones, really. So jumping in on this project, something that I really wanted to include was a gorgeous water feature. I felt like this world would have had some really cool art and designs in it, so I wanted to make sure that some of this was still around even though an apocalypse had hit it. To start things off, I knew I wanted to give my fountain a lot of round textures. I didn't want to go any sort of weird geometry, I wanted to keep it sort of soft and elegant. I started off with a couple of layers of foam just to get the base started. I know I'd be adding resin into this later, so I wanted to make sure it was nice and stuck together. When creating the fountain itself, I found this sauce bottle that was laying around and I knew I could cut this into different sized hoops and it could make a kind of cool art feature. I glued these rings onto the top of a plastic lid and it just waited for it all to dry. In the end, I'm actually pretty happy with how this turned out. It was kind of innovative and it looks really cool. The last thing I needed to create was some pipes that the water would have been splashing out at some point. But I did want a couple of these to look broken and in different sizes. I found these plastic straws that you would use in little milk cartons or juice boxes and these worked perfectly. Perfectly. I cut them at various angles and popped them onto the fountain where I wanted my water to be coming out.
To ensure that the paint would stick in the end, I just gave it a couple of layers of Mod Podge and water and waited for this to dry. All right, so I found some really nice pieces of acrylic and I'm gonna turn these into some sci-fi walls. I'm gonna make some nice curved walls rather than just the sim simple uh, 90 degree angles you always see in wargaming boards. So this will make it really interesting in sci-fi. However, I think we've used the laser cutter more than enough. It was really nice and simple to use it to cut the really big pieces, but we're gonna do the rest by hand, right? But uh, turns out we don't have a coping saw, so uh... So I just tried to strong arm it. This had various degrees of success. Most of it was vaguely dangerous. You can see me wearing proper protective eyewear. So this isn't the most optimal way to break things, but it is honestly probably the fastest. And you can see that I was tiring pretty quickly as well. So I decided to use the vise to hold it in place and then hopefully not damage the camera. So I decide that clearly we need to speed this up. To get some nice jagged shapes of the building walls having crumbled, I'm going to use this bandsaw to cut the shapes. Now, when using power tools, it's always very important to use the correct safety procedures. Terrain is great, but it's not worth losing a finger over. I then bent the pieces of acrylic using a heat gun in exactly the same way as I did so for my Gundam video. However, it was kind of hard to hold a camera, a heat gun and the acrylic, so I neglected to film this part. Now these walls, while they look really good and I'm really happy with them, they need a little bit of garnish. So I'm going to do some little sort of sci-fi decorations and greebling going down them. Maybe some fallen wall panels. I'm feeling very Portal 2 vibes of all the sheets falling off the wall. The coffee cup I found at the very start had this really nice rippled texture on it and I wanted to use that as sort of an art centerpiece that might still just be hanging onto some of the walls. So I applied it to a couple of the walls and we'll paint it up really nicely later. One thing I wanted to do was to create some verticality in the terrain. I didn't want to create large areas of advantage for a particular player on the table, but I did want to give the sense that this was inside a structure rather than being freestanding and out in the open. To do this, I used pieces of MDF and roughly broke them up, creating a jagged surface on all the edges as if the render and masonry had all crumbled and collapsed. Then using hot glue, I positioned the pieces and created a little crumbled corner of the wall. Now a few bits of MDF on their own were not going to sell the idea of a ruined building. So I grabbed some thin plastic hard tubing, bent it slightly, cut it up and glued it squished between the layers of the MDF. This looks like bits of bent rebar or cables hanging out of the floor above down to below. And then on the upper floor, I added some rubble. With the floor above done, I wanted to add a little bit of greebling down below. A greebling is the idea of detailing out a surface to make it look more realistic. And for this, I got some plastic card with a board and batten wood texture to it, carved up the edges and made it rough and then glued it down below. The idea of this was it was some kind of wallpaper or wooden paneling that had been blown away in chunks. And this was what was remaining on the column. So Murray has gotten me some pieces of acrylic and I'm gonna try and make these into LCD screens that have like fallen from the building and all on top of the rubble, but I really want to mess one of them up. So I'm going to try and see if I can shatter uh, this piece of acrylic. Um, wish me luck. I don't know how this is going to go. It went terribly. So Jen came and got me and I came in with a file and smashed that acrylic. Hey. Yeah, chisel is your go-to. Yay. And you can repeat that with a chisel really easily. You don't even have to hammer it that hard. Nice. Go bump, bump. Yay. Another key feature I really wanted to add to this board was some broken TV screens. Now I had a sort of vision of Chadston in my mind, which is a shopping center we have here and they have LCD screens all over the place. So I thought adding these to the board could create more of an interesting story. So with my pieces of acrylic all cut out and smashed up by Dave, it was time to start making my screens. The first thing they needed was a piece of clear plastic that would go over the top in between the LCD screen and the glass that you look through. I use one of the clam packs that we have here at the studio to create this glass effect. Once 
Once my plastic was all cut out, it was time to create some scratches. I went in with my hobby knife just to create those bits of broken glass and I went over the top with a white paint just to make the edges more refined. I was really happy with how this effect worked out and it was time to move on to the screens themselves. When it came to painting the colored lines that would appear on the LCD screens, I ran into a fair bit of trouble. Originally, I had put down some tape and tried to create the really thin lines that you would see, but it just wasn't working at miniature scale. Every time I tried it, the lines were too thick or they were just not coming out the way I wanted them to. So Dave jumped in and gave me a helping hand again. David used the side of a card to pick up the color that we wanted and put this onto the LCD screen. This created a thin enough line that it definitely made the effect show through. We did this in a couple of colors and put it all through the LCD screens and I love the way this turned out. It looks perfect. With all the bits and pieces being built on the side, it was time to texture up the board. So we mixed up some sculpted with some black pigment and just put this all over the board, pressed up into the areas where rubble will have built up. Now we were really careful at this stage to use this on the minimum amount of area possible because we really wanted to maintain the playability of the board. And as you all at home probably know, sloped surfaces are the bane of any model's existence. So we really used this to press up and in and create as rapid drop-offs as we could to ensure the max maximum space to place miniature bases. The only thing that was left to do with the LCD screens was put it all together. And I was really happy with how everything was turning out. The last thing I wanted to do was try and create some wires that would be coming out of the LCD screens. I found this armature wire that was thin enough to work. All I had to do was dip the wires into the paint, which give it a nice wrapping of insulation. So on this largest piece of the board that's overlooking all the rest, we decided that it would be really cool if this was like a fallen wall of the entire enclosure that's just come down. So it's going to have this huge featured door prominent on it. And I found this really nice piece of plastic that was sort of embossed with this almost floral pattern. It was really cool and I thought it would make this really cool door. So I'm going to cut it into shape and just apply it straight onto the sheet here. Then I'll frame it with some plastic card and at the top, a little off cut of MDF that's nice and symmetrical and will give a really nice silhouette. And now to frame the door, I'm going to use more of the plastic card that I used on the wall and just layer it around and just frame it up. I'm going to put them all down and then take some away to make it look like some have fallen down and I will replicate the effect of scrunching up some of them. To do that, all I'm going to use is a heat gun or a hot air dryer and just blast them for a few seconds and then I can grab them with a gloved hand and just scrunch them up like tissue paper. So I wanted to mention to you something we've kept pretty quiet for this video. The reason why we made it in particular and why it is the size that it is. This board is actually the size of our Gate Crash games. If you haven't been paying attention, we are in the early stages of producing a miniatures game and we wanted a really cool environment. So this is actually built to be set on Scrap, one of the characters we previously announced, Homeworld. And if you're interested in supporting the development of our game, make sure you head over to our My Mini Factory. So any purchases of the game models, Scrap and Hypatia are currently available, goes directly into funding the production of more miniatures. There's also a last chance for the next couple of days to buy the signed early dev poster on the website, links in the description, and anything you contribute supports the development of the game. Thank you so much and we'll get back to the video. It was time to move on to the next section of the board and I decided I really wanted to create some type of garden. I feel like the society before would have been really big nature and plant lovers, so I wanted this to be included in the board. I found these cardboard tubes which I thought would make pretty good stands for the plants to sit in. Again, just trying to keep with the round theme that I had going on with some of the design of this board. Once the cardboard plant is were all cut out, it was time to add some stability. I cut up a couple of pieces of foam that would go inside to make sure that the tubing would stay put. Once this was all in place, I gave it a good layer of Mod Podge and water, just like my fountain that I had made before. 
we decided we need a little bit more verticality when it came to creating the board. So I made up a couple of pieces just like Dave's in a very similar fashion so that these could be added to the board later on. I was really happy with how the board was coming together at this stage. We'd lay down a whole bunch of plastic art and we were really dirtying it up with some rubble. Murray filled the top of the planter pots with some stones and we also laid this around in multiple areas to give a little bit of rubble all across the board. It was also at this stage that Murray placed his awesome curved pieces of acrylic to create those really organic and sci-fi looking walls. And finally, with texture paste galore, we could glue in our bog roll pillars. And then we were ready to paint. To paint the terrain, we spray painted in a few more futuristic colors. In some areas we focused black and in others we came in with a purple and a greeny gray. These foundational colors will help to add some variety across the war-torn shopping center for our later painting steps. And for a final step, Murray with his beautiful shoe coverings came in and sprayed white all over the terrain. And we could see this underpainting technique really start to bring some life to this sci-fi ruin. All right, Jen, you and Murray have done a fantastic job while I've been painting scrap. Uh, Murray's out now, what do you want me to do? Well, we've got to put paint on this board. It's uh, looking a bit bare bones, so we need to add some color. All right, I'm gonna start with this little thoroughfare, maybe some stippling techniques. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna work on more defined areas and really bring them to life. Let's do it. It was painting time and as a large piece of terrain, the paint job needs to be something accessible and not too time consuming. So I knew I wanted to use a lot of stippling techniques. A really good way to build up a sense of texture and color and ruin and rubble in an area is to use sponges and stippling. So I grabbed a few variations of them and just sponged and stippled them onto the same area on this central thoroughfare. The idea being that this was once a pristine, perhaps polished stone walkway that has now been weathered and and worn through being exposed to the elements. Now this stage can look a little bit rough, but once we come in with some weathering powders and also some sprays and washes later, it really comes together. And it has that look of maybe a limestone or a marble to it. So as you can see, this board had a ton of texture on it, which meant it was a dry brushing dream. I just went over the top with a really light gray and just brought out all of those textures and really made them shine. Now at this stage, we were thinking of the main thoroughfare in a large expensive shopping center. So down the sides, we used a gold paint to create the trim of that central walkway. In the original plans, Murray liked the idea of there being one of those sort of one millimeter thick, almost invisible waterways across the side. A very expensive and lavish styled thing that has long since broken and ran mostly dry. To do this, I just painted black paint between the gold gilding and then using the same card technique as I had used on the LCD screens, I created a tile pattern running down the length of these channels. Now that we were all finished with doing our white dry brush, it was time to add some pops of color. We had used a bunch of different textures in the individual rooms to represent shops and each of those floors was painted a different color. And for the shops that looked like they had a bit of a wood grain texture, I came in with a brown wash just to give it a little bit more depth in the wood grain. Using two different types of gold, we painted the front door and the trimming around it. In a little nod to Portal and Aperture Science, the front wall was painted white with each of the panels kind of a rusty, rustic red. This part of the build really reminded me of Portal 2 when you see Aperture all falling apart, especially these disconnected panels. final touches into the boards meant putting some flowers into these planter pots. I decided I would keep one planter pot full of flowers and the other full of plants.
And with so many more little areas to detail, weathering, pigment, and wash, we set about dirtying up the board as well as adding a few more little spot details in the form of wires, plants, and rubble. For us, this experience took a couple of hours, but for you, just a smooth, short break of jazz music. One of the things we really wanted to include and we've used numerous times is putting in posters and billboards to give a bit of a storytelling vibe to the world that we're trying to create. So I'm gonna jump online now and just find a couple of posters and advertisements that I think would look really cool. Remembering again, this is like a Star Trek universe that's kind of gone dystopian. So there's kind of more a PG or peaceful sort of vibe. So I think I'm gonna try and find some really cool movie posters and then just like some general PSA sort of stuff. Nothing too propagandy, nothing too weird, but we'll see what we can can find and we'll print those out and we'll put them on the board at the very end. So using some squares of clear acrylic, I glued the paper together back to back. So we'd have these nice double-sided movie posters and then glued that in between two pieces of clear acrylic. Getting some plastic card that I painted black, I created a trim along the bottom of the acrylic and we have these gorgeous freestanding information boards. I think these are such a cool little futuristic touch, but they also feel like they could be home at a movie theater in the modern day. So all our pieces were built and we were up to our absolute last finishing touches, adding a little bit more render onto the walls, as well as fixing into position the awesome LCD screens that Jen had made. Altogether, this was a really fun bash of a project and I I hope you enjoy the finished result. Thank you to all our patrons for supporting us and helping us make these video. You truly are the apple of my eye. You are the wind in my sails and you are the, um, and you are the cinema billboard that has escaped the destruction of the post apocalypse. Truly, I gaze upon you in, in envy and glory. I don't know. Yeah, that's it. That's the patrons. Thanks patrons. It's done. Woo! Oh my god. It's pretty cool, isn't it? That looks fantastic. This is the perfect size to play games of Gate Crash on. You could also play skirmish games on there like Infinity. You know what I could see stomping around this battlefield? Yeah. Mechs in Mech Arena. Thank you to the sponsor of the video. Once more, Mech Arena. Go click that link in the description. Get those free goodies. A plasma cannon did this. Let's go play some Gate Crash. Yeah. Get out of here, you little scamps. Oh. Go have some fun. Alright. This leaves me in the viewer. Oh. I'm still on the camera. They're still in frame because the door is shut and they couldn't leave the room dramatically. <laughs> Help. This is awkward and uncomfortable. Can you just get out of frame, please? Just press. Uh. Just, just a little bit more. That's what power feels like.